Hi, it's Kada, and today I'd like to share with you a Q&A about my experience collecting over 300 dolls within the last three years. If you're new to doll collecting, maybe my experience will help you on your new journey. Or if you're a seasoned doll collector, maybe some of my experiences will sound familiar. When did you start collecting? Aside from when I was a kid and had everything Barbie, as an adult, I began collecting in April 2020, right as the COVID pandemic began. So as of the filming of this video, it's been just over three years. What was your reason for buying that first doll? Two words, coping mechanism. I think during the pandemic, a lot of people were grasping at anything that could bring them some comfort. For me, it was the nostalgia of my childhood Barbies, which were my first loves and always sort of hanging out in the back of my mind throughout the decades. The need for comfort during the pandemic was finally the justification I needed to buy a Barbie. And I actually learned that doll and toy collecting in general grew significantly during the pandemic, so I wasn't the only one. What was the first doll you bought? I bought the first Barbie I ever had, the 1976 Ballerina Barbie. Followed by one of my favorite childhood Barbies, the 1981 Pink and Pretty Barbie. and incomplete on eBay. And they weren't perfect. But at the time, I wasn't intending to spend that much money because I was asking myself, what am I going to do with these? I'm going to go talk to some food about this. How did you start building a collection? Well, at first it was going to be just a couple of my childhood Barbies, which I scoured eBay for. Then it was pretty much any 1980s or older Barbies that I could find at thrift stores. Then once I realized that Halloween and retro themed reproduction Barbies existed, I started scouring eBay for those too. And then once I started learning about all the cool and beautiful Barbies that had come into existence in the last 30 years, I really started branching out and pretty much just buying anything that appealed to me. And then I discovered Monster High. It's high school for monsters, right? Yeah. And after that, floodgates. Now between Barbie and Monster High, at the last count, I probably have around 300 dolls, more or less, probably more. Just like with cats and tattoos, once you get one, you gotta get more. Wah, wah. What did people think? My husband loved it. He's always been a collector of things and a toy geek. He really liked that vintage Barbie stuff was similar to Mattel's Big Jim stuff. And he really liked Monster High and how they were universal monsters. So from the beginning, he was into it. Also, my mom and my sisters were delighted when I started collecting. They loved seeing all the latest Barbie stuff I got. It was nostalgic for them too, and my mom even began hunting for Barbie stuff at yard sales and flea markets and antique stores. Otherwise, I didn't really tell a lot of people. I quickly learned that whenever I did tell people that I collected dolls, they either got it or not. And the knots were a little awkward. We really love the holidays at Graham Grams, but it's tough to Relax. <sighs> For example, one time on a work trip, I brought this doll with me. I was alone in the car, but I ended up meeting my boss in the town that we were visiting, and uh, he saw the doll in the car. And, um, and it was weird. Yeah, it was hard to explain. <laughs> I didn't really get into it. He didn't really ask, but I could see it in his eyes that he didn't get it. It was one of those moments. It was one of those moments. <laughs> so, what do you do with the dolls? I play with them. Mostly it's setting up scenes and photographing them or filming them. Sometimes I obsess about a movie scene or characters and I'll recreate it with dolls. My favorite set was the characters of the Anne Rice novel, The Witching Hour. 
Other times I like to dress them up for holidays or events and just have them hang out. I love looking at them, they're beautiful. How would you define your collection? Laid back, casual, and beloved. I'm an out of the box collector. I like to be hands-on and active with my dolls. I can spend 80 to $100 on a box doll, and when she arrives, I immediately cut her out of the box, put her in new clothes, and eventually she gets crammed into the same box as $2 thrift store dolls. I don't mind if they're imperfect or unkempt. They're that way because they're an active part of my life. What do you say to people who say your collection looks like a hoard? I say, well, duh. <laughs> yeah, we're in the Rockies. I'm not blind to the fact that this is a mess of dolls. And so what? Just looking at them makes me happy. Plus, another activity I do with them is regular reorganization. When it gets to be overwhelming, I find pleasure in the cleaning, reorganizing, decluttering process. To me, that's part of the hobby. And in the meantime, I don't mind that there's 150 Barbies tucked together in one bookshelf. And another 150 Monster High dolls on another bookshelf. I like seeing them all together and the memory of how I got each doll and being able to reach for the one I want at any given time. Later I might decide on a different display method and I'm sure that'll be another reorganization project that I'll enjoy. Do you ever feel like you have too many dolls and what do you do then? Yes I do. The current rule of thumb for myself is if I can't fit all of my dolls on these two bookcases it's time to reduce. Between Barbie and Monster High, I've probably let go of around 75 dolls, more or less, over the years. I'll put them on eBay or give them away to family or donate them to Goodwill. Do you have a theme or goal for collecting now? Not really a specific one, but I know what I don't want. I've pulled way back from 70s and 80s Barbies, but I would like to repurchase my childhood ones in much nicer condition. I also love the retro Barbie face sculpts, the original, the TNT, the Steffi. I'd love to get more birthstone beauties. I love the three holiday hostess Barbies that I don't have, the Halloween, the Christmas, and the Thanksgiving. Those are way out of my price range right now. And for Monster High, I'm currently not obsessing about anyone except that I'd love to get the remaining G1 and G2 Cleos that I don't have, and there's a lot, and Nefaria, which I don't have any of. I might not even be pronouncing her name right. What's been the most unexpected place you found dolls? On my husband's dusty old bicycle in the garage. <laughs> Years before we started collecting, he decided that he wanted to line the basket of his bicycle with Barbies. He's artsy. I don't question it. And so in like April of 2020, when stores were closed and I couldn't get any Barbies, I was like, hang on a minute, don't you have Barbies in the garage? He was like, yeah, I do. So he brought in probably like six or seven dusty old Barbies, which he calls the Boneyard Barbies. And I cleaned them up and they were the beginning of my collection. They were good ones too. He had two Fairytopias, these. And it was just hilarious and wonderful that my husband had Barbies before I was even interested in Barbie as an adult. He had the Luke Perry doll too. He had this doll just with his stuff. What was the most complicated purchase you've made? From early on, I really wanted that Barbie camper van, the Star Traveler from 76, I think. It was one of my earliest childhood memories. And just like with the 1976 Ballerina Barbie, that was like one of the first things that I wanted. It was really hard to buy online. When I could find one at a price I wanted to pay, the seller then decided that they underestimated their shipping costs and so they'd back out of the sale. That happened three times. At one point, I even ended up with two Star Travelers because one of them felt like they weren't gonna ship. And in the meantime, I found another one that was a really good price and I ended up having two. I was able to sell one of them. What's the most money you've spent on a doll? The Barbie Fashion Model Collection Silkstone Fashion Editor. She was my grail doll. And after watching her on eBay for years and watching the price continually go up and up and up, 
I finally took the plunge and I bought a pre-owned doll. Including the cost of shipping and tax, I paid $231 for this doll, which is outrageous, but worth it. I love her. Are there any purchases you regret? I mean, I definitely feel like I've overpaid on some dolls when I grew impatient and wanted it now. But otherwise, no, no regrets. How can you afford to buy dolls? Secretly, I'm an heiress. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm an older adult. I have a job. I have no kids, but I do have five high maintenance expensive pets. But otherwise, I rarely travel anymore. And currently, this is my main hobby. What's the most interesting thing that's happened since you've been a collector? Two really interesting things. One is I inherited the boxed childhood dolls of one of my best friends that I never even knew had 26 Barbies in a box in storage from her childhood. They were collected by her family and kind of forgotten about and she was downsizing and didn't care to own them. So she gave them to me and it was one of the biggest joys as a collector to inherit not only these really beautiful box holiday Barbies, but that they belong to my friend and that I could keep them and love them for her. Another cool thing was that husband started doing an annual Barbie art show for the dolls. He creates and exhibits one six scale paintings and we have an art gallery opening in our house just for us for now, but it might expand in the future and husband has created some beautiful original art. I've got all the paintings in storage and maybe someday we'll have a retrospective. So that's it. I hope my experience helps guide you on your own doll journey and gives you some insight on how we're all unique collectors in our own preferences and choices and ways of collecting, while at the same time we have so much in common. And it's really cool when we can connect with each other and say, hey, that's like me. So please share in the comments your answers to any of these questions about yourself. I'd love to know about your experience with collecting too. I think it helps us all to hear that all ways of doll collecting are right ways. See you next time.